Hi, I'm Anastasio Kanzakos. I'm a consultant total laryngologist at Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi. I'm a fellowship trained laryngologist and I am the head of the voice clinic at Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi. Um, celebrating the World Voice Day on April 16 is a great opportunity to touch um, a few topics and a few um, areas that uh, would be very interesting about voice problems, voice concerns, um, and anything that had to do with uh, any voice and swallowing problems. At Clever Clinic Abu Dhabi, uh, we have the great privilege to be the first uh, hospital that has implemented a multidisciplinary approach on voice-related and swallowing-related problems. We are the first hospital that implemented having joined forces between laryngologists and uh, speech and language pathologists to treat these uh, problems in a multidisciplinary way. Hello, my name is Aisha Tai. I'm one of the speech and language therapists that works here at Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi. I've been working here since 2021. Um, I'm UK trained and in the UK, one of my areas of specialism was working with patients who have a voice disorder. So Aisha, uh, I think it's a great opportunity also for the audience to hear about the World Voice Day. What is the message of the World Voice Day? And uh, as we had been working together for quite some time, and, and we are, as mentioned, the very first hospital that implemented this multidisciplinary approach in voice-related problems, I think it would be you know, great for uh, the audience to understand what the World Voice Day is, what the message is, and what are the problems that we are you know, addressing when, uh, in our clinic when we work together. So... Um, as a laryngologist, uh, obviously, you know, we, we share the same interest um, in treating these patients. Um, just to mention a few things about uh, the World Voice Day. The World Voice Day is, is a day that started, uh, as introduced as a day to celebrate voice in 1999 in Brazil. And it's been a mutual effort between laryngologists, speech pathologists, and voice coaches. So every professional that is actually working in voice and voice-related problems. And the message behind the World Voice Day is uh, to raise concern about the voice, but not only as a problem, but also voice being a tool of, of artistic expression, a, uh, a means of communication, um, and um, means to uh, tell our opinion, express beliefs, express ideas. So it was a great opportunity to raise voice as um, something to celebrate for, and so every year there is a certain and a different motto for the World Voice Day that is celebrated. And the motto for this year is to empower your voice. And I'm really glad you touched on how important voice is because it's only often when we don't have a voice or when we lose our voice that we start to realize the impacts that it has. So a lot of our patients come when they've lost their voice or they can no longer speak like they were able to. It can affect them in their work. They may not be able to conduct meetings or give presentations. Certain professions like teachers, it can have a real huge impact in their day-to-day -day vocation. Um, aside that, emotionally, it can really impact a person. As you said, a voice is not just a tool for communication. It's how we reflect our personality, our emotions. It's how people recognize us. Our voice is very unique to us. And it's a really valuable asset. So when somebody loses that, you know, they often lose a sense of who they are. It's very much a part of your self-identity. So the opportunity to raise awareness about voice and how important is it, it is to prevent voice disorders and to treat them effectively, it's a great opportunity. Exactly. And, and, and just to, to echo what you said, um, we know that voice or a voice-related problem is not like a lethal problem, right? So not someone's going to die because of a voice-related issue. But the psychological burden that someone carries when the voice is lost or affected is immense. And we can see that in the patients that come to us, how much affected they are psychologically when there's a voice problem, where they cannot really use the voice in professional, uh, you know, in their professional needs or in their everyday needs, and how happy they are once this voice is restored. Yeah, and having that specialist voice clinic where they can have a really thorough assessment using tools like stroboscopy, which we are lucky to have, it really helps to get that accurate diagnosis. But we, we, because without that accurate diagnosis, it makes it harder for, for us to treat. So having that is really, really important. 
exactly. Now, the the other thing that I want to touch up on is that a lot of people f- believe that, you know, treating the voice problem is only the job of a doctor. And this is something that I want to emphasize. You know, having a multidisciplinary approach in voice-related problems is crucial. Uh, to give an example, a parallel example, is the same way that an orthopedic surgeon does an orthopedic surgery and then requires a physical therapist to... Um, do the rehabilitation of the person that has been operated. So it's exactly the same thing. So doing an exact and a perfect operation is not really the best thing for a patient unless this is accompanied by the rehabilitation, which is done by a specialized speech pathologist. And, and this is something that, you know, I think that we value today uh, in, here at Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi, um, basically because um, as... Laryngologists, we work with specialized speech pathologists that have a special interest in voice-related problems. So voice therapy is, is extremely important for the proper rehabilitation of the voice. Yeah, and you know, one of the first questions that a lot of patients come with when they've seen ENT, that often they've found a reason for the voice problem, but oftentimes they've been told they have a normal larynx. And then they come to speech therapy. And the first question is, why am I coming to see a speech therapist? I can talk. So often the first session is about educating what we can offer in speech therapy and in particular in voice therapy. So voice therapy, people often have ideas that we're going to be doing singing lessons or elocution and it's actually very different. This, the breadth of work that we do in a voice therapy session is is quite immense. So, you know, we often start by taking a full case history from the patient, finding out about their vocal use, their lifestyle, their medical conditions you know, things like allergies, reflux, that could also be impacting the voice. But we spend a lot of time also discussing emotional, social things that may be happening around the time when a patient loses their voice or starts to have a voice difficulty. Because oftentimes we find that a voice problem is multifactorial. It's rarely one thing that causes a voice problem. So when they come to speech therapy, they have an opportunity to talk about all these things, and then we can educate the patient on how we make a voice, all the different subsystems that are involved in voice, because oftentimes we don't think about these things. And then we'll often do a lot of um, strategies, education, discussing things that the patient can do to try and improve their voice and help them get back to their previous level of function as much as possible. And then we often start by thinking about a therapy plan, if the patient is appropriate for some voice therapy. And the example you used of a physiotherapist working with an orthopedic surgeon, a lot of times voice therapy is like physiotherapy, but for the muscles involved in voice. So we will be doing some exercises to help things get back into a good position and get as much, you know, and get easy vibration and good, and good voicing again. Exactly. So, um, and, and the privilege that we have working at Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi is that we have state-of-the-art technology, we have all the equipment and expertise to work with even complex problems of the voice and the airway in general. Uh, and this is also something that, uh, that uh, the audience um, needs to know about, not just voice-related problems, but also other problems that have to do with the swallowing, with the airway in general with obstruction of the airway, but also something that is actually uh, a very, very uh, recent knowledge about treating cough and chronic cough problems. Um, We we understand that cough is not just a a, a symptom of an inflammation, but also sometimes it be related to many other things and it become very important to do what we call breathing control exercises to try to control breathing, voicing, swallowing in a way that the airway is not irritated to produce cough. Yeah, so as you said, we are getting increasing number of referrals from pulmonology, um, where patients are having difficulty, where they've had a cough for a long time, or what we call vocal cord dysfunction, where the vocal cords are closing when they should be open. So things like irritable larynx is another thing that speech and language therapists are really well equipped to help work with and try and treat Because we know how the voice works, we know about the mechanisms, we know how the vocal cords work, so we can help patients to manage these symptoms a lot better. Exactly. Um, the the fact that we we have this uh, this cooperation is also very important, you know, to work with other problems. You know, running a uh, a voice clinic together with a speech pathologist that uh, enables you know, speech pathologists to witness examinations or to perform examinations together with the laryngologist uh, helps also the patient understand the depth of the problem and also motivates the patient to attend you know voice therapy sessions when it comes to that. 
Um, now, I know that at Clement Clinic Abu Dhabi, as mentioned before, you know, we have state-of-the-art technology and equipment that we can do office procedures that way in the past had been done uh, at the uh, operating theater. Now we are able to do these procedures at the office. So, so the patient can actually benefit from procedures uh, without really undergoing a general anesthetic, uh, but at the same time be able to be transferred to a speech pathologist to do voice therapy sessions right after these operations. So this is something unique and something that um, we are proud uh, to do and I uh, believe that we are the only institution in the UAE that's been doing this. This is quite important uh, for the audience to know. Uh, that is you know, something that we offer to them. Yeah, and that collaboration, being able to start working with the patient in a timely fashion so that they're not developing things like strain or overuse of the muscles, which can happen after surgery, so that we can really maximize the, you know, the surgery and make sure that they have good outcomes following that. Exactly. So there are some messages that our audience needs, needs to know about uh, looking after the voice. So voice hygiene measures uh, are quite important. A lot of patients come, you know, being dehydrated, or you know, not being familiar with the strategies that someone needs to have uh, to protect the voice and the voice box. And this is also something that uh, we need to uh, emphasize to the patients, but not only proper voice hygiene measures, but also watching their diet to prevent reflux problems that can also affect the voice. Yeah, for sure. So often, as I said in the initial session, we'll be talking about lifestyle factors, things that could be triggering the voice problem or making it worse. So part of that is looking at what a patient can do. So hydration, as you mentioned, making sure that a patient is well hydrated, and even things like inhaling steam regularly, which can really help with a voice disorder. Um, also things like just thinking about how they use their voice. Oftentimes we see patient who are, patients who are throat clearing, coughing, and you see them doing it throughout the session. So it's educating patients on what that exactly is doing to their vocal cords each time they cough, each time they throw it clear. So it could be simple management things that will hopefully help them to get a more comfortable voice. Um, also, just how they talk. We sometimes see patients who talk for a living. They come into the session and they're talking louder than they need to be. So we might be educating the patient on using the right level for the, for the interaction that they're having. For a one-to-one -one conversation, we might talk about using what we call a confidential voice so that they're not trying to always overwork or overuse the voice. Um, That's exactly right. Now, the other thing is that we need to also to emphasize some, some misconceptions that a lot of people have. Um, one common misconception is that we can see from patients coming and telling us that I had a sore throat or I have a voice problem, I'm hoarse, and uh, I... I uh, I, I was told that I can drink some, some you know, water with honey or I can do gargles and that's going to go away. Um, so I, I'm just going to bring it up to you to just, you know, uh, open the eyes to a lot of the people that have these misconceptions. What is the right thing to do um, in these <laughs> well, this conditions? Yeah, it's very common. You know, they say, oh, I've been having honey water or these lozenges and these are... You know, I think they're helping. I'm not sure. So it's often just going back to that initial ENT diagnosis. What was found? Maybe there is a reason for that voice disorder. Maybe there is some inflammation. Maybe there is a muscle tension dysphonia. They're overusing their voice. So it's going back to educating about what, you know, how the voice works, what helps the voice. So, so a, lot of people, <laughs> no, it's a lot of people, you know, uh, they, they need to understand that, you know, what you swallow goes in a different, exactly uh, is a different yeah. tube, okay? It goes yeah. in the esophagus, it goes, so you swallow, it doesn't really pass from the voice box, it doesn't pass from the vocal folds. So anything that we can swallow doesn't mean that affects our voice directly. Yeah. Um, and this is a, a quite a common misconception on people that uh, think, think that they can drink something that they correct or, you know, improve their voice. Uh, instead of doing hydration, instead of doing yeah. steam inhalations, as mentioned earlier, which is like a, a local hygiene that uh, a lot of people may or should apply. Also, I think the other misconception is that all these uh, um, uh, eucalyptus extracts uh, like uh, Vicks and lozenges uh, that are, have a freshening effect in the mouth, they have a, an adverse effect in the airway because they're actually volatile. So instead of hydrating a surface, they dehydrate the surface. So instead of actually improving the voice, they may have a long-term detrimental effect if someone continues to consume these yeah. you know, for long periods of time. So this is also something that, that the, uh, the patients, the audience needs to, to understand, the distinction between what they drink and what they put in the, in the airway that is entirely different. 
and these are entirely different pipes that work in, in different ways. Very much so. Um, another thing that uh, it's quite important is also touching on, on diet precautions. As mentioned earlier, you know, people that have reflux problems, they may be getting, you know, acid reflux without understanding that this can lay on the surface of the voice box and eventually affect the voice production, the vibration of the vocal folds. So, you know, having a, a diet that is protected and from reflux, even some healthy foods such as, you know, tomatoes, such as, you know, acidic or citrus fruits, if they're consumed late at night, they can produce more acidity. So, or these should be somehow avoided for patients that have reflux symptoms or for patients that have voice problem in order to improve the voice in a short term rather than a long term. Um, so these are things that we always provide to patients, handouts and lifestyle, you know, uh, changes and modifications that they need to apply in order to help them improve the voice uh, uh, fast. Yep. So, um, so with the upcoming World Voice Day, uh, what, what is the message that you can you know, pass over to the audience? How to celebrate the World Voice Day? I think it's a great opportunity to really reflect on your voice, what it means to you, how important it is, and how, what a valuable asset it is. So the theme, empower your voice, really celebrate it. You might want to sing your favorite song, you might want to enjoy talking, even do a recording. How nice does it feel sometimes to get a voice recording and actually hear someone rather than just read a text? So as much as possible, look after your voice, protect your voice, and also monitor your voice. When things are changing, if you're feeling like you have some vocal fatigue, something is not right, you're having some pain, get it checked. And you, know, you may find that a speech and language therapist and the ENT consultant can offer you some really valuable advice and help how to look after and prevent voice disorders. Absolutely. So celebrating the voice can be in, in many ways. Can be, as you mentioned, you know, singing your favorite song, maybe reciting the Quran, or, or you know, um, attending a concert. Any anything that has you know the voice um, in in the environment uh, is a great opportunity to celebrate this day, and also to reflect on yourself and how you use your voice, how to look after your voice and what voice means to you as, as a tool to communicate, as a tool to express yourself in many ways, whether you express your opinions, your beliefs, your ideas, or your art through your voice. So with this, I would like to uh, conclude uh, this uh, podcast, and I'd like uh, to thank you for, for being uh, today. Thank you. And uh, discussing these very interesting topics about voice and the World Voice Day meeting. Thank you.